Hey everyone, Wydek welcoming you again, this time to Game 3 of a Best of 5 series from the Go For SC2 Cup number 310 edition. And this time on Whirlwind, we've got spawning in the top right as the Green Zerg, we have Mouse Sports Hope. Unfortunately for Hope, he is down 0-2 to, to his opponent, spawning in the bottom left. As the blue Zerg, we have Team Quantix Hyun. Hyun does have a stranglehold on this series. He just needs one more game to take the sweep. So all the momentum and all the good vibes are on this side of the map. And unfortunately on this side of the map, I think Hope is thinking, what can I do? Both games war were... Bit heavily excuse me i don't know what's going on today both games were heavily roach based uh in game one uh it was entirely roach based that determined the outcome and in game two both players opted for roach hydra but hope was in the lead for a while but he didn't get the upgrades he only had plus two attacks and no armor upgrades but he had two two instead and even though hope had a larger army eventually that larger army did dwindle and Hien was able to secure the victory. So we'll have to see if either player is going to change things up. Now Hien is going for Hatchery first. Same thing as Hope. So it looks like the mirror matchup is a mirror currently. Now Whirlwind is one of those maps where if you want to do some very special things, you can do so. This is a large map. There's four spawning locations. So early rush attacks are not very good generally, simply because you don't know where your opponent has spawned. And in this game, players have actually spawned in the cross spawn location, so it actually takes a lot longer to get to your opponent's base. Now there is something that goes on on Whirlwind that doesn't go on in many other maps because of this cross spawn location. This Zilnaga Tower is going to be key in being notified about advancing attacks because the straight line attack from your base to your opponent's base is past the Zelnaga Tower. So if you have a unit here, you're going to be able to see when your units are attacking before they get to your base or when they're retreating or if they're relocating or whatever. Now, if both of these players had spawned perpendicular or parallel to each other, this Zelnaga Tower wouldn't play much of a role because to get to your opponent's base, you basically entirely avoid the range of of the Zelnaga Tower. So this Zelnaga Tower might play a key role in this game because they are in cross bond locations. So that is something to note that is significant. Now once again, Hope is getting Zergling speed. Now he's done this the previous two games, but in both games, neither of his armies were really Zergling nor Baneling based. And uh, he did go for the Baneling's Nest. Oh, and he's going for the Baneling's Nest again. So once again, in Game 1 and Game 2, he went for the Banelings Nest, but I don't recall seeing any Banelings in either game. Now, I could be wrong, but what I do know for sure is, is that both games are very few Banelings, if any. So, why is Hope going for Zergling Speed and Banelings Nest when it hasn't worked the previous two games? Primarily because he hasn't really built those units on mass so this is gonna this is very strange i'll have to see we'll have to see what's going on in hope's mind maybe it works out this time third time's a charm they like to say uh generally that's not the case in starcraft generally i find players that are down 2-0 just lose the third game as well but you never know hope is a very good player unfortunately hope zerglings are not going to be able to get a the, get a scout into the main base of hyun but once again, Hyun does have better creep spread. He already has two creep tumors down. Now, last game, Hope actually had zero creep tumors. And I think that's the first game I've ever seen that go past 15 minutes from a Zerg player where they actually had zero creep tumors in the entire game. So it looks like Hope might be changing his strategy a little bit. He's got one creep tumor out at least right now. But we do have four Zerglings from Hyun, and he's going to try to run up this ramp. Going to be able to get up here and be... And these Zerglings are going to be able to spot these key buildings and pick away at least at one of the drones. One of the drones do go down. So he does know that once again, there is a Baneling and Spawnling, uh, Baneling's nest in play, I believe. Yes, he was able to see it, just barely. 
But like I said, in the first two games, he built a Banelings nest, but didn't really build any Banelings. So I'm not sure what's going on in Hope's mind once again. Now, what we do see from Hope is a Spire. So a two-base Spire play. I haven't seen this in quite a while. This may be very effective because remember, the first two games are very, very Roach heavy. And if... Hyun is thinking that the Banelings Nest and the Spawning Pool is going to be the key for Hope's victory. He might have a rude awakening in about mm, two minutes or so. And that's one of the weaknesses of the Zerg. They don't have observers and they don't have scans like Terrans do. So sometimes it's difficult to scout each other out. Because you have to actually sacrifice units just to get a scout. So you have to send in an Overseer which is prone to attacks from Queens or Hydras. You might have to run in a whole bunch of Zerglings and a whole bunch of them will fall. And so getting a scout out on your opponent is difficult. So surprise attacks from Zerg on Zerg matchups are very, very good. Now the third base of Yen is under barrage from the Zerglings. The Queens are going to try and come up here very slowly to pick away at these Zerglings. At least Hope was able to do some damage to that hatchery before he had to retreat with those Zerglings. Now his own third base is also en route to be finished. In fact, it's going to finish before Hyun's third. But it looks like the Zerglings are able to get into the natural base of Hyun, able to get a full scout out in the natural. Looks like he's scouting around four buildings in the main as well. Doesn't see anything. So Hope does have a lot better scouting over his opponent than vice versa. So this may be an advantage for Hope because he's basically been able to confirm there's no Hydra Den and there's no Spire. So if those Mutalists, if he can hold on to those Mutalists until they're really, really big in numbers, then you might be able to surprise them, but nope, not going to work. Two Mutalists have immediately been spotted, and actually, Hope is supply blocked as well. We have a significant supply advantage for Hyun, but Hyun's going to get have to get some anti-air out. Now, he's getting some Hydralis now. And Hydralis do wreck Mutalis quite easily. So now Hope doesn't have the element of surprise. And Hydralis are already out. Now two queens are in the middle of the map with no other anti-air. Is Hope going to be going for the counterattack? No, he's going to be defending his base. He's going to be focusing down on these queens, I believe. Uh, no, he's going to be running away with the Mutalis. Uh, I didn't know there was a third option. I didn't think retreat was going to be in that vocabulary of Hope. But it looks like with... In conjunction with these roaches, I think Hope's army is significantly better, actually. But now with the Hydralis here as well, these Mutalists are very easy prey to Hydralis. So this is still up for anyone. This game is up for grabs. And Hyun is going to be advancing into the natural base of Hope. Now he's... Oh, he's got a great concave, but all units are able to fire on each other. Transfuses go down for Hyun. He's also got two queens reinforcing this position. The Mutalists are falling very quickly. There's only two left. But there's so many roaches. It looks like he had might have pressed his luck just too much. Now the supplies are still even and this army does look about the same. But all the mutilists have been destroyed. But it looks like Hope is going to be able to press his advantage here. The two queens are trying to flee on that creep. And Hope is marching forward, firing and moving forward, microing those roaches magnificently. And Hyun is trying to reinforce with more and more roaches. And now Hope is going to have to pull back just temporarily. But I think that engagement went really well for Hope. Even though resources lost are fairly even, I think Hope came out ahead in that encounter. Now, both players do have three bases, but I think these two queens are stuck in Dead Man's Land. They're not going to be able to do too much off that creep. Now, once again, Hyun does have the upgrade advantage. He has plus one armor. Once again, Hope opting not to get armor upgrades. I'm not sure why. Because last game, he had double evolution chamber. This game, he only has one. Now, Hyun is going to destroy some of those Creep Tumors with that Overseer. Destroying Creep Tumors is not a bad idea. You don't want your opponent to have so much Creep Advantage, able to see so much of that map. Now, Hyun is stabilizing on three bases, just like his green Zerg opponent. But Hope is going to actually skedaddle back to his base. But he does have about a 20 supply advantage. Is he, gonna ma is he actually going to be able to use it this time to win? Because last game he had about a 20 or 30 supply advantage 15 minutes into the game and then he lost because I really think it's because he didn't get the upgrades. Now once again he doesn't have Carapace upgrading like his opponent does. So once again is this going to spell the end of hope? 
even though he does have a larger army. Now, what we see from Hyun is actually, even though he has double evolution chambers, he's not upgrading Carapace right now. He's kind of low on gas, so he's just getting missile attacks. So he'll just have that plus one armor upgrade over his green Zerg opponent. Now it looks like the Zelnaka Tower is going to be used by all these roaches, able to see the movement of Hyun. Now Hyun is, looks like he is in full retreat. Hope is going to stampede in here. He has a 30 supply advantage. Can he finally use this huge roach advantage to push over Hyun? He's got 42 roaches to Hyun's 31. I think that's a big, big advantage here. And now he's got a great surround. Even though there is this little divot here, he's able to get a great surround with the roaches and the hydralis. All the hydralis are in the back, so the roaches are taking brunt of the damage, and that's what you want roaches to do. You want them to protect the high DPS, frail hydralis in the back. So, Ro so Hope is doing a wonderful job in this game. He's able to do that, and now he's forcing an encounter at the third base of Yen. But he doesn't have that many roaches left. He only has hydras in the back. And without roaches in the front tanking damage, the Hydras do are falling very quickly. And we have more reinforcements from Hope, but it looks like Hyun might be able to clean this up. So even though Hyun has been able to really do significant damage to Hope's invading armies, you take a look at the army supply, he's still down by 40. So I think Hope is just going to get a really, really big army and then go for one final attack. Because he's, he's primed in position to win. He really needs to win this game. He doesn't want to get sweeped. He wants to force a game four. Make the series longer. Make it interesting. And you never know. If you win one game, maybe you can rattle your opponent. You can win the next one. And you can force that final and decisive game. But everything that might happen in the future is totally dependent on what he can do here. And he's got so many roaches and so few hydras. I think he's going to be able to do it. I think he should be able to do it. Hyun's army is just too tiny. We have 35 roaches compared to 17 for Hyun. So I don't think Hyun's going to be able to hold here unless he's got like 90 spine crawlers somewhere that I don't see. And it looks like Hope is going to be moving across the map. His creep spread is better than his opponent, surprisingly, compared to the first two games. And this little ninja attack of two roaches is going to fall miserably. And I think Hien knows what is coming. Hien is trying to get actually plus two armor. I don't think that's going to do very much for him. Uh, his army is just too tiny. We have a 40 supply advantage. We have 50 to 20 roaches. That's just way too many roaches. Now the positioning for Hien was good, but we've got a full surround by Hope. And this army for Hien does not stand a chance. All the roaches and hydras are just melting away in seconds. Take a look at them. Take a look at that awesome animation when they're... Getting melted down, and Hyun is going to have to GG. So Hope able to stampede back and claim victory in Game 3. Once again, Roaches and Hydras key to victory for either side in all of the games. So we'll have to see in Game 4, is Hope going to be able to push it to a final decisive game, or is Hyun going to bounce back and close off the series? Let's head over to Game 4 so we can find out.